Although Zara Tyndall was raised by Princess Anne, the Queen's only daughter, you'd have a hard time knowing it, since she lives a life as close to normal as a royal can get. This is the truth about Queen Elizabeth and Philip's eldest granddaughter. On May 15, 1981, Princess Anne and her husband, Captain Mark Phillips, welcomed their second child at St. Mary's Hospital in Paddington. The couple decided to name her Zara Anne Elizabeth Phillips. Although it's easy to pinpoint the inspiration for the middle names, Anne after the baby's mother, Princess Anne, and Elizabeth after the baby's grandmother, Queen Elizabeth. The first name is quite unusual for a royal, but it was actually the baby's uncle, Prince Charles, who suggested it to his sister. Princess Anne later explained, the baby made a rather sudden and positive arrival, and my brother thought Zara, a Greek name meaning bright as the dawn, was an appropriate name. This relatively unconventional name has greatly increased in popularity since the early 80s, when it ranked at number 3,197th in popularity. In early 2021, Zara was ranked the 123rd most popular baby girl name. Although she's very much a member of the royal family, Zara Tyndall is neither a princess nor a senior royal. This is because Princess Anne declined her mother's proposal to bestow Tyndall with the royal title of princess. When the Times asked Tyndall if she thought her life would have been different with the title, she responded that it probably would have been. But there was no way to be sure. She said, I can't really answer that. I'm very lucky that both my parents decided to not use the title, and we grew up and did all the things that gave us the opportunity to do. We, you know, did everything what everyone else did, you know, went to school and... You just went um, to the village school? Initially. Yeah, initially, yeah. While many of us as children may have dreamed of what life would be like as a princess, it may be hard to imagine someone actually feeling lucky not to be one. It's more than likely, though, that Princess Anne knew the costs and benefits of life as a princess all too well, and simply determined she didn't want her daughter to live that life. In 1998, Zara Tyndall, then going by her maiden name of Zara Phillips, showed up to Prince Charles' 50th birthday party with her tongue pierced. That may not seem like a big deal now, but for the Queen's granddaughter to rock a body piercing, even in the late 90s, was kind of scandalous. At the time, Tyndall was but 17 years old and on summer break from boarding school. Although her tongue stud has since been removed, Tyndall's father, Captain Mark Phillips, once told the Times that his daughter is still very much the wild child. Tyndall, who was also present at the interview, interjected saying, I don't know if I was that wild. I guess it looked like that because of my family background. I'm sure that is what it's probably compared to. Since Tyndall has always been involved in the world of sports, her father attributes her wildness to what he calls the sporting life. But that doesn't mean she's a party animal. When asked by the Times reporter whether she gets slaughtered, a Britishism for getting overly drunk, Tyndall objected. Her father explained the impact drunkenness would have on his daughter's sporting career, adding, getting slaughtered is not an option, but it doesn't mean to say you can't go and have a beer or two. All things in moderation, right? When Princess Anne was a teenager, she started getting interested in horseback riding. By 1971, when she was in her 20s, she had already won a number of inventing titles and was even named BBC Sports Personality of the Year. A few years after marrying Captain Mark Phillips, she went on to compete at the Olympic level in Montreal. Phillips, too, has an interest in horses, which is how the couple first met. In 1972, he won gold at the Summer Olympics in Munich, Germany. That same love of horses may very well be in Tyndall's blood. Blood. Tyndall started riding horses pretty much as soon as she was old enough to sit on a saddle, and some 35 years after her mother was selected as BBC Sports Personality of the Year, Tyndall went on to earn the title as well. Like her parents, Tyndall also went on to participate in the Olympic Games at London in 2012 and won a silver medal, making her the first royal to win an Olympic medal. Was it very important that you beat your mother's record? <laughs> mm, no, but it's very important I beat my father's. Shortly after her wedding in July 2011, Zara Phillips gave up her maiden name and took the name of her husband, the captain of England's rugby team, Mike Tyndall. The two were married in a summer ceremony in Scotland at a fairly small church, Cannon Gate Kirk. The bride was dressed in a duchess satin and ivory silk gown by designer Stuart Parvin, who is most notably known for also designing outfits for the queen. Tyndall also donned a tiara, given to her by her mother. A number of royals were in attendance at the wedding, including the bride's cousin, Prince William, and his new wife, Kate Middleton. Although Tyndall told Hello Magazine that her ceremony would be nothing like Kate and William's, because it was much smaller and for close family and friends only, it was still a royally pricey affair. 
The reception, which took place at the Palace of Holyrood House, is estimated to have cost about $60,000. Add the eye-popping reported cost of $800,000 for security at the event, and you've got yourself a heck of an expensive wedding day. In November 2014, Zara Tyndall gave birth to her first child, Mia, but Tyndall had been given at least a kind of parental responsibility prior to this, as Prince William and Kate Middleton chose her to be a godparent to Prince George. The young prince actually has a total of seven godparents, all of whom come from a variety of backgrounds. One of the appointed godparents is an interior designer who is friends with Middleton, while another is a childhood friend of William. Then there's the prince's private secretary, the couple's mutual pal from college, a close friend of William's late mother, Princess Diana, and the now incumbent Duke of Westminster. Tyndall, however, was the only family member to be chosen. Just a few short weeks after Mike and Zara Tyndall announced they were expecting a second child, tragedy struck when Zara suffered a late-term miscarriage. In an interview with the Daily Telegraph, Mike publicly discussed the couple's loss for the first time. He simply said, "'Obviously, you're gutted.'" Nevertheless, he highlighted the silver lining, which was having a three-year-old child at home to keep the couple occupied. Prior to the miscarriage, neither Mike nor Zara had known anything was wrong. They showed up for their ultrasound, hoping to learn the sex of the child, and instead were given the devastating news that their child had died in utero. Mike explained, "'You walk out 20 minutes later and the whole world's been turned upside down, and everything's changed.'" Fortunately, further testing ruled out any medical issues. As Mike Tyndall continued, "'It was just a freak thing.'" In January 2018, the media reported that Zara Tyndall had become pregnant for a third time. A spokeswoman for the couple subsequently confirmed they were, indeed, expecting baby number two. Kate Middleton was also pregnant at this time, meaning Queen Elizabeth had to prepare for welcoming two new great-grandbabies to the family. Luckily, the queen appears to be quite the doting great-grandmother and, according to The Telegraph, told a spokesman that she was very pleased to hear that Tyndall was expecting. Although many fans of the royal family were over the moon about William and Middleton's newest arrival, Tyndall's baby was certainly another welcome addition, too. Tyndall gave birth to daughter Lena in June 2018. Of course, there was considerably less hoopla over the birth than that of Middleton's son, Prince Louis, who had been born in April of that year. But that may well have been more of a blessing than a curse. Have you ever wondered if Queen Elizabeth stays up late binge-watching Netflix's hit show The Crown? Rumors claim she is a fan of the series, but Claire Foy, who played the queen in the show, isn't buying it. In an interview with Vanity Fair, Foy was told that the monarch had watched the entire first season, but voiced her own doubts, saying, "'I can't believe it. I hadn't heard anything about it, and I will believe it when I see it,' is all I'll say." Still, it appears that at least a handful of other royals do watch the critically acclaimed series. For example, Mike Tyndall got more than a little excited when a reporter from the Daily Telegraph asked if he watches The Crown. He said, "'Addicted to The Crown. You've got to watch it. It's great.'" Although he also admitted he can't say for sure just how accurate the show might be, the Tyndalls appear to love it all the same. You might typically think of royals giving birth in luxurious, expensive hospitals before emerging into the daylight so that the mere mortals might catch a glimpse of the blessed child. Spare a thought, then, for Zara Tyndall, whose third child, Lucas, was born at home on March 22, 2021. The little boy wasn't just delivered at home, however. Queen Elizabeth's tenth great-grandchild was actually born in the bathroom. The palace later issued a statement reading, "...the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh are delighted with the news and look forward to meeting their tenth great-grandchild when circumstances allow." Proud father Mike Tyndall recalled the birth during an episode of his The Good, The Bad, The Rugby podcast, saying, a little baby boy arrived at my house. Oh, You're wow. kidding! Oh, no, yeah. Well done, mate. Congrats. The situation sounded pretty dramatic, too, with the former athlete revealing that luckily, his wife's friend was on hand to recognize that they wouldn't make it to the hospital on time. After that... So, yeah, it was running to the gym, get a mat, get into the bathroom, get the mat on the floor, towels down. Brace, brace, brace. Oh. The midwife hurried over, everybody got into position, and thankfully, everything went pretty smoothly after that. 
They might technically be royals, but the Tyndalls try to live a life as close to normal as they possibly can. Zara Tyndall and husband Mike, along with their three children, reside in the majestic Gatcombe Park estate in Gloucestershire, which was part of a wedding gift from Queen Elizabeth to Princess Anne. The Tyndalls occupy a cottage just a short walk away, with Zara's older brother, Peter Phillips, also taking up residence on the grounds with his own family. During the COVID-19 lockdown, the Tyndalls were spotted taking long walks in the lush surroundings of Gatcombe Park. Likewise, People magazine once reported that a young Prince William was fond of the so-called controlled chaos of Gatcombe Park because it was so different to more formal royal residences. Indeed, the cozy farmhouse is very much suited to Zara and Mike, who'd rather keep their children out of the spotlight, and are often seen doing the school run and shopping at local supermarkets. Naming their two daughters came relatively easily to Zara and Mike Tyndall. But when their little boy came along, the couple were stumped. The former rugby star admitted on his podcast that they were struggling to find the right name for their son. He even previously joked, in reference to the COVID-19 pandemic, we're not sure what to do, Kovi or Kovina? I don't know where to go with names. Eventually, they settled on Lucas, meaning light-giving. And although this is a lovely name in itself, the child's middle name was even more meaningful to the couple. Both Zara and Princess Eugenie opted to pay tribute to their dearly departed grandfather, Prince Philip, following his death in April 2021 at the age of 99, by giving their firstborn sons his name. Zara named her boy Lucas Philip Tyndall, while Eugenie called hers August Philip Hawk. Both women reportedly had a special bond with the Duke of Edinburgh, so it makes complete sense they would honor him in the names of their children. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more list videos about the royal family are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.